So the NES is arguably the most iconic system of all time, and it's a system that a lot of us grew up playing. And unfortunately, when you played a game as a kid, you kind of got a mental image of the game, you know, the way it looked, the way it sounded. And as an adult, it's hard to replicate that feeling. The NES was obviously designed for CRT TVs, so those images that you had in your head of your game don't necessarily look as good on an HD TV. And there are a multitude of ways to play NES games nowadays. There's cheap clone systems that use composite output. There are also higher end things like the Generation Next and the Analog NT. But all those systems seem to miss the mark a little bit. There was always missing a feature or two that just didn't make it as good as it could have been. You also have things like the Retron 5, but that's an emulator system. It's not really using real hardware. So what about those who are looking for the purest NES experience in HD with modern upgrades? Retro USB has recently released something called the Retro USB AVS, which looks to have everything that an NES collector would want. It has HD output, it's all original hardware, Famicom support, four player mode, and a lot of modern touches that really make this system interesting. So I'm very excited to check out this system. We're gonna do an unboxing, I'm gonna put it through a series of tests, and we're gonna see what the Retro USB AVS is all about. Because honestly, if it says, if it does what it says it's gonna do, this is gonna be one of the best NES consoles ever. So let's check out the Retro USB AVS. All right, so as we see here, we have the Retro USB AVS. Cool looking system, player NES carts in amazing HD. So let's see what the system is all about. Now I will say there is a good weight to the box, which is good. It doesn't feel like a cheap clone system. And here we go. Comes with a little pamphlet, basically explaining how everything works. And here is the console. Now, first and foremost, I love the colors. I love the scheme of it. It looks fantastic. Uh, it has a good weight to it. You can see that it's definitely molded in design after the original NES system. You have your power button, good click, reset button, and you open this flap up here and you see your NES cartridges go in here and your Famicom cartridges go in here. So this does play both NES and Famicom cartridges in HD. Nice little flap to it. You have your four controller support here for games like Nightmare on Elm Street or additional homebrew games. They actually sent me a four player homebrew game called Quadra Lords that I'll be checking out. Um, this is a retro USB product as well. They are releasing some new cartridges to go along with the launch of this system. Now, as far as power is concerned, it's actually pretty interesting. You use a standard USB cable and anything can power it that allows for USB. Or, if you want something more traditional, you have your traditional plug in the wall. Now, what's actually interesting about this cable as well is you can um, access a high score thing, which is pretty insane. There's gonna be a website dedicated to uploading high score stuff. I don't believe it is active right now, but we are going to try that anyways. Um, it is through nintendoage.com, which is a fantastic website for retro gamers. I definitely highly suggest you check them out. And of course, we have the HDMI cable to hook this up to the television. So first impressions of the system, um, you know, there's, this is a very well-built system. There's no, you know, marks on it. There's no, oh, they should have done this, they should have done that. And if you hold it upside down, the flap does come open. But I do like how it has the AVS logo engraved in it. I'll try to get a good shot of that. It's engraved in the top here. Um, obviously, no expense was really spared with this system. So I'm definitely excited to check this out. So now, let's play some games on this thing and see how it does. All right, so for this review, I've selected some NES and Famicom games. We're gonna play Batman, made by Sunsoft, Felix the Cat, made by Hudson Soft, uh, Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse, because of the advanced sound chip in it and the graphical capabilities, 
some of these clone systems don't run that game well. Kirby's Adventure, because I think that has some of the best graphics on the system. Uh, we have a copy of Kid Dracula for the Famicom. And we have, of course, Quadra Lords, which is a new game from Retro USB. So this should cover a good variety of games um, to see you know, how well the system handles various things, various chips, homebrew, and of course, Famicom. So let's get into it. So this is the interface of the Retro USB AVS. As you can see, there's cheat codes with the Game Genie. You have your input options if you want to adjust your controls, your video options where you can choose some cool stuff in there, and the scoreboard. Um, the scoreboard is not online right now, but basically what you do is you just hook it up via the USB on your computer, and it taps into a database where you can upload scores. I'm definitely very interested to see how this works. Um, you just need a Nintendo Age account and you are all set, which is free. So as you can see, Felix the Cat um, is our first game and the G Game Genie codes are preloaded, which is awesome. That's a really good feature because, you know, it's not fun having to look up Game Genie codes. I really enjoy Felix the Cat on the NES. Um, definitely it was in my Hidden Gems video for the NES, which you'll probably want to check out after this video because you'll get some good game suggestions but Felix is a really fun game it has a really good color palette it was released by Hudson Soft in 1992 for the NES so kind of towards the end of the NES's life cycle and the uh, ABS handles the game great the colors look amazing everything just looks real nice vibrant and crisp and the gameplay doesn't suffer at all it's a fast game actually very um, kind of like a Sonic almost not quite as fast but you know Felix gets upgrades with his magic and he can do various moves and stuff it's a really just a really fun platformer game and I'm kind of sad that Hudson Soft went away because they made really fun games you know the Bomberman franchise was fantastic it's, it's a shame that Konami never picked them up and really did anything with them after acquiring the license but Felix the Cat looks and runs great on the retro USB ABS Definitely a must own in my opinion for the NES library and it hasn't looked better in my opinion. Next up we have the Caped Crusader with Batman by Sunsoft and once again everything looks phenomenal. The sound is really good, the audio quality is great and the game just looks very vibrant. That's one of the things you're going to notice with this system is that the colors just pop more so than, you know, anything else. Um, any other clone system, anything else I've really ever played. And, you know, there's no input lag with the controllers. I used a variety of controllers while playing these games. I used uh, officially licensed ones. I used third party ones, NES Advantage. And everything was great. Everything was crisp, responsive and really just, you know, it felt very natural. It felt like playing on actual, original Nintendo hardware. And Batman's a really fun game if you don't own this game. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, very cheap game, definitely on the lower end of the pipe price spectrum for the NES, and an amazing, amazingly fun game. You know, think of Ninja Gaiden with Batman, and you pretty much have Batman. It's a little easier than Ninja Gaiden, in my opinion, but... A really well done game and runs great on the system. This is Quadra Lords, which is a retro USB original game. So this is a homebrew game running on the console. Now you might be thinking what the hell is going on. Basically each quadrant is a player and the goal is to not have the ball hit your um, fire in the middle. If it does, you are knocked out of competition. It looks like a very simple game, but it's actually pretty fun and very addicting. Um, definitely a simplistic style game, but it is great to see Homebrew running you know, efficiently on the system. And this was a fun game. I actually had a good time with it, more so than I thought I would.
Up next, we are playing a Famicom game, which I will not try to pronounce the Japanese name, but this is Kid Dracula, which is sort of like a Castlevania meets a Mega Man style game. Um, it's definitely more geared towards the younger audience, but there's still a good challenge, and this is a really well done game. This is definitely a Famicom game worth importing as it never was released in the US officially, and it's very cheap still. You can pick this up, you know, not for much, and it's definitely worth being in your library. The gameplay is very tight. Some of the uh, future levels have some really impressive scaling and a sense of speed. And it's a really it's a really solid game and it runs fantastic on this console. Uh, as you can see, the colors are nice, crisp, the sprite flicker is minimal, um, more so than original hardware, I feel, on some of the titles. And there's actually something uh, setting in the system that you can increase the sprite count, which will, for some games, uh, decrease flicker as well. But this is all natural, this is all being recorded on an Elgato HD60 with the retro ABS hardware, and Jesus Christ, there is a Nazi KKK man. Where did this come from? This is probably the reason why the game was never released stateside, because the first boss is literally a KKK man with a Nazi symbol on his head. But it is a fun boss battle, and you are getting rid of the KKK, so that's a good thing, in my opinion. So, Kid Dracula runs great, Famicom games run great, and it's definitely an awesome game worth checking out, especially if you pick up a retro USB ABS. Kirby's Adventure has some great scrolling and really great colors, an amazing color palette, so I wanted to showcase this game. I will probably have the sound very minimal or possibly muted for this section so that Nintendo does not come after me, but Kirby's Adventure runs smooth and fantastic, which is a big plus because it's definitely a taxing game on the system. The uh, scrolling that's coming up here is really impressive. Uh, just amazing that this ran on original NES hardware and it runs flawlessly on the retro USB ABS and looks great. And Kirby's never looked better for Kirby's Adventure. And finally, this is a big thing for me. This is something I wanted to showcase the retro USB ABS versus the Retron 5. These were both recorded with the Elgato HD60. There was no post production done to this. And this is a good side by side comparison because this is an impressive game graphically for the system. Now, in my opinion, the ABS looks better. If you look at the Retron 5, it almost feels too bright. Um, there's a lot of unnatural brightness in the colors, and it kind of makes some of the colors look a bit washed out. You know, it's just, it's it's very strange because I didn't adjust any settings, like I said, on either one of them. This is just all natural how it was recorded, and I just put them side by side. So, in my opinion, I feel the retro, AV, uh, the retro USB AVS looks better. It looks more natural, the colors look better in my opinion, and the sprites look better in my opinion. Now, it's all up to interpretation, of course, but in my opinion, the ABS takes the cake on this, and it runs great on the system. All of the audio that you're hearing is from the ABS. The audio sounds great and crisp, which has a special sound chip in it. Castlevania 3 has a special sound chip in it, so that's worth noting because some emulation systems don't run this game well, or there are sound or graphical issues, and I ran into none of them with the retro USB AVS, neither with the Retron 5, but you have to remember that is emulation. But I thought this would be a good comparison to kind of showcase what to expect. And like I said, in my opinion, the AVS takes the cake. Let me know what you think, though, in the comments section down below of which one looks better. So after running all my tests on the retro USB AVS, is the system worth picking up? Retails for $185, but I say yes with one small caveat. If you're a casual NES player, you don't have a big NES collection, you don't have something like an EverDrive which the system will play, then the system probably isn't for you. If you're just a casual NES player, you're not going to get that much enjoyment out of it. But then again, if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in products like this in the first place. And for you, this is perfect. You gotta remember, things like the Analog NT sold for $500, they sold out, and they didn't even have 720 output built into it. This system has all of that. It has old school technology with the cartridge slots, but it has enough modern touches with things like the Game Genie codes built in, 
you can get up system updates through USB, and of course the online scoreboard, which is not up yet, but I am looking forward to checking out. The system through ev played every game that I threw at it, Every peripheral worked fine from third party peripherals to NES official controllers and NES Advantage and things like that. And I'm just blown away at the quality of the system. I never once had a blow in a cartridge. I just put it in and it played. And to me, that's almost worth $185 right out of the gate. I'd like to give a special thank you to Retro USB for sending me this system, letting me check it out, and a special thanks to you guys because without your guys' support, your subscription, your comments, they probably would not never even notice me. So thank you to both Retro USB and the fans. Make sure you let me know what you think of the Retro USB ABS in the comments section down below. Let me know if you're gonna pick one up. I will have a link in the description box if you plan on picking one up that you should check out. And make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thank you for watching this review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you guys next time, later.